DuPont Cavalcade of America presents The Exiled Heart, starring Rosemary DeCamp as Louisa May Alcott. Good evening. This is Rosemary DeCamp. The name of Louisa May Alcott is known to us all as the author of Little Women, but few of us know that she was the real-life heroine of a delightful and romantic love story of her own. So tonight we go back with Cavalcade to the New England of 83 years ago. Tonight, the DuPont Cavalcade of America presents The Exiled Heart, an original radio play by Virginia Radcliffe starring Rosemary DeCamp as Louisa May Alcott. Our home was in Concord, Massachusetts, in the great days of Emerson, Hawthorne, and Longfellow. But even in that inspired setting, the Alcott family was considered extraordinary. There was father, Bronson Alcott, transcendental philosopher, rich in dreams. I'm sure I'll be able to pay the bill in full by the end of March. And Mother Alcott, who shocked the respectable ladies of Concord by saying... I'm going out and get myself a paying position. And there are three daughters, my dashing elder sister, Annie, and I, the eager, awkward, would-be authoress, Louisa, and our talented, if somewhat spoiled, baby sister, our baby sister, May. Please, Louisa, can't you see I'm reading? Oh, excuse me. What is it? Your new novel, of course. Little Women. It's wonderful, but I simply don't understand. What about me? The character of Laurie. Who is he? Yes, Louisa, we can recognize almost everyone else in the book. Even the title, Little Women. Oh, I can remember your father calling you girls that years ago. Didn't you, Bronson? So I did, and now you're all so grown up. I'm Meg in the book. You're Joe, Louisa. May is Amy. And our darling Betty was the model for Beth. But there never was a boy next door, and we don't know anyone like Laurie. Yes, who is he, Louisa? Where did you meet him? Well, I guess the story began about four years ago, really, when the war ended. Things were frightfully expensive, and we were terribly poor. Father and I were in the study, going over the monthly bills. Here's one I guess we ought to pay immediately, Louisa. What's it for? Oh, May's art lessons. Well, I guess I can scrape enough together. She can stop taking them for a while until we're caught up. No, I won't think of it. I have some payments coming from my novel moods and... But if you use it all up on May's lessons, how are we going to buy coal for next winter? Oh, let's not worry about that now. I'll find a job this summer somehow. Oh, I don't like your doing that again, Lou, minding other people's naughty children. What else can a genteel spinster do, Father? Now, please don't worry. You just leave it to your ugly duckling. What's this? A letter? How did it get mixed in with the bills? I don't know, dear. The postman must have brought it this morning. Oh, it's from Mr. Weld in Boston. I met him at a reception last month. Weld? Well, yes, I remember. Father, listen. He says, Dear Miss Louisa, this is to remind you of our conversation regarding a European tour planned for my daughter Anna. As you know, she is not at all well and will, of course, require a traveling companion and nurse. If you will be kind enough to consider accepting the post, we should both be greatly in your debt. Oh, Father, a trip to Europe, London, Paris, Christopher Columbus. Why, it sounds delightful. Write Mr. Weld immediately and accept the position. But how can I? What would you and Mom and May do without me? What will all the bills do without me? Oh, we'll just forget about them till you get back. But I'd miss you also. And who'd sit with Annie's baby if its maiden aunt were gone away? I sit very effectively myself, Louisa. Ah, oh, Father. Now, I'm going to be adamant. You've borne the responsibility of this family long enough, trying to earn a living for all of us and being able to write only in your spare time, and I insist. No, as your father, I command you to go. Oh, Father, you are a darling. Goodness, I'd better start thinking about getting some decent clothes together. Even an old maid has to dress well when she goes to Europe. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Miss Weld, I can't. 
can't bear to leave them. We'll be thinking about them all the time we're away. Well, you'd better start thinking about remedies for seasickness. I just know I'm going to feel ghastly. Dear family, arrived in Liverpool safely. Dear Papa, London is very foggy. Saw the wonderful cathedral at Cologne. Wiesbaden, very crowded. Love, Frankfurt. Heidelberg. Lake Geneva. Zurich. Davey! Phew. Oh, let's catch our breath here, Louisa. All right. I'll inquire about rooms in that pension over there. Inquire? The sign says Real American Bathtub. Let's register. Ah, uh, bonjour, Mademoiselle Alka. Bonjour, Madame Piquet. Ah, uh, où uh, est le petit déjeuner? Hein? Comment? You know, the breakfast room. Ah, ah, ah. Ici, Mademoiselle. Voici. Oh, merci beaucoup. Ah, uh, Mademoiselle Weld is. Uh, oui, oui, oui. Uh, N'est-ce pas. Uh, hein? she, she has the malaise. Oh. Uh, could you possibly serve le petit déjeuner in her r- room? And, uh... Come on, come on. Oh, bother. Ansel, may I help? Huh? The French language appears to present great difficulties. Uh, perhaps I could give Madame Piguet the instructions. Oh, would you? I should be delighted. Uh, Madame, uh, Mademoiselle Vell désire le petit déjeuner dans la chambre. Oui, Mademoiselle. Immediately. Uh, you're very kind, monsieur. Uh, Wisniewski. Ladislaus Wisniewski, a Polish name. Oh, yes, well, uh, would you teach me to pronounce it? I'm just a gauche tourist, but I am eager to learn. It is like this. Ladislaus... Ladislaus... Wisniewski. Wisniewski. Ladislaus Wisniewski. Good, sir. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, do you uh, plan to stay in Vive long, mademoiselle? I've no idea, really. You see, I'm the paid companion to a young lady who has the desire and the means to travel. Oh? She's most attractive. Perhaps you'd like to meet her. Oh, Mademoiselle, if you will forgive me, I would much prefer it if you would do me the honor of driving about Vive with me this afternoon. I? Yes, of course. If you are free and would care to give me that great pleasure. Well, golly, Mr. Wisniewski, I assure you, the pleasure will be all mine. My sisters and I used to act in fierce melodramas out in the barn. We called them uh, The Witch's Curse and The Moorish Maiden's Vow, things like that, you know? Oh, yes. Anyway, I was always both the hero and the villain in my high boots and plumed hat and mustache. Oh. <laughs> ah, I must be boring. Oh, on the contrary. I wish to hear much more. Uh, tomorrow, we come out together again, yes? A boat ride on the lake? Perfect. Oh, uh, shall you mind a canoe? I cannot afford to hire this sailboat. I have always thought sailboats quite ostentatious. <laughs> oh, you know, mademoiselle, you are my first American friend. I am? Yes. Uh. And you are just as I imagine Americans to be when I was home in Poland. Uh, you're going back soon? I am in exile, mademoiselle. An exile? Oh, but why? Because I believe in liberty. Because the people of my country are oppressed. And I want to fight for our freedom... And here, there are other exiles like myself who believe as I do, who are working with me. Will it be dangerous? Perhaps. Mm. Oh, but do not worry, please. I am sure you yourself would not hesitate to do the same as I, if it meant the freedom of your homeland. Downstairs. I don't feel at all well tonight. Please stay a little longer. I want you to hear him play. He is rather good looking. Yes. And I know you like him. What good is it if I do confined to my bed most of the time? I never have a chance to get to know people. Oh, 
that's beautiful. What is it called? Uh, it is a mazurka, written by my countryman, Friedrich Chopin. Oh, uh, 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 come here, Mr. Wisniewski. I want you and Miss Weld to know each other. Oh, Miss Weld? Mademoiselle Weld. Oh, I am so happy to meet the friends of Mademoiselle Alcott. Thank you. She makes friends quickly, I see. Especially while her employer lies ill. All alone. Anna, that's not fair. You said you wanted to be alone today. Oh, it is entirely my fault. I monopolized her time and we found so much to talk of. I'm sure you did. Tell me, young man, just what do you do? Uh, I'm afraid I do not quite understand. <laughs> Why don't you just say you're traveling for your health? Oh, it is certainly true. Well, so am I. And I need my nurse in attendance almost constantly. Oh, too bad, Miss Weld. I was in hopes you could spare Miss Alcott for a little excursion to the lake tomorrow. Sorry. I shall require her to be with me all day. And, yes, perhaps all evening, too. <laughs> Listening to The Exiled Heart, starring Rosemary DeCamp as Louisa May Alcott, with Alice Reinhardt as Anna, and Elliot Reed as Laddie on the Cavalcade of America. Sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Making the grand tour of Europe as nurse to Miss Anna Weld, I saw many strange, wonderful places and strange new people. And among these was Ladislaw Wisniewski, a young Polish refugee. I realized Anna disapproved of him, but I met him anyway for a canoe trip on the lake. Want me to paddle a while, Mr. Wisniewski? Oh. Please, not to call me so, Louisa. Huh? In America, you have the custom of the, uh, knick-knack. Oh, you mean the nickname. Oh, the nickname. Uh, well, let's see. I, 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 I want to know what you could possibly make of Ladislaw. <laughs> I'll be blessed if I know. Wait, I've got it. Laddie. Oh, parfait, Laddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is as if I were at home with my family again. You're very lonely for your home, aren't you? Yes. Perhaps I shouldn't talk about mine. It's not quite fair. Oh, yes. The other day, you began to tell me about the time you went to your first ball. Uh, something about kerning the hair. What was it? <laughs> oh, well, there I was in a new frock and hobbling around in my first pair of high heels. Uh -huh. <laughs> my hair in papers and brandishing a curling iron when suddenly... Yes, we smelled smoke. Oh, I can guess what is coming. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> My beautiful girls came right off with the papers. Oh. What a pathetic row of little scorched bundles. Oh, it is so pathetic, but yet so amusing, this picture. <laughs> Why do you not write it down? Write that down? Oh, who'd want to read it? Ah, uh, nothing really exciting ever happened to us. Listen to me, Louisa. I'm going to be very plain. Unpleasant, maybe. I read your novel, Moods, last night. It is not good. It is unreal. I know. But the stories you tell me about your family, your home, they are wonderful. You have the gift to make the homely events of every day exciting. Listen. You tell me your father called you and your sisters a, a, a nickname nickname during the war. Uh, what was it? Little women. Yeah. And we tried so hard to be grown up in response. Then make that your theme. Oh, Louisa, please write it. If only as a great favor to me. To you, Laddie? Yes. You see, when one is in exile, there is not much to go on but dreams of such a woman as you, of such a home as yours. It is all there is for an exiled heart to cling to. I see. I'll try, Laddie. I'll think it out and try to write it. Yes, maybe I will call it Little Women. And it will be for you.
that old Chopin music. Doesn't your laddie know anything else? Of course, but I asked him to play this. It's the Polonaise Militaire. Sort of call to arms to his people. You know you're making yourself rather conspicuous being seen so much with him. Conspicuous? Yes. I worry about you. You're, you're so trusting. Oh, this man is a stranger, a European. What's the difference where he comes from? Please understand, it's only your... What is it, ladies? Do you not enjoy the music? I'm sorry, laddie. We're very impolite to talk while you were playing. Oh, but there is something wrong. No, please. Uh, Miss Wells was only saying that it's time to... As a matter of fact, I was saying it's time we continued our tour of the continent. Oh. Oh, I shall be so sorry to see you leave. No doubt. Louisa, please go upstairs and get started with the packing. Annie, you don't really mean it. Must we go? The climate here doesn't agree with me. We leave for Nice first thing tomorrow morning. Coming, Anna. I'm coming. Oh, did you get a nap? You feel any better? No, I feel perfectly miserable. I felt miserable ever since we came to Nice. Here, let me straighten the bed. Oh. Perhaps you'll be more comfortable. You want some tea? I want to know what the maid was talking to you about in the parlor. I had a telegram from Laddie. Oh. He he's going to Paris, Anna. Well, we aren't. We're staying right here in Nice. Oh. I want to know what you do with yourself while I'm resting. Moon about him all the time. Oh, of course not. I've been trying to think out a book I want to write. <laughs> a romance, no doubt. No, it's a story about my family. I guess it was Laddie who made me see how important it is that I write it. Oh, Laddie again. Why don't you be sensible? Why don't you look for a husband who could at least support you? Anna, don't you think it's possible for two people to become good friends without making a romance out of it? No. Well, I do. His life, his background have been very different from mine. Yet we think alike. We believe in the same things. Oh, Anna, it's almost as if he'd been living next door to Orchard House back in Concord all this time. And, and we've grown up together. Come now, Louisa. Be honest with yourself. You are in love with him, aren't you? Aren't you? Yes. I guess I am. Then I'm truly sorry for you. But why? Oh, I haven't been easy to get along with, Louisa. I know I'm difficult, but I am fond of you, and sometimes when people are ill, they see things well people don't see. In spite of what you say, my dear, I know he can never come into your world and you will never enter his. I don't believe that. Of course you don't. So you'd better go to Paris without me. But Anna... Go on. Go oh. on, it's spring. Go and meet your laddie. But... Oh, Louisa, be sure to keep watch over your heart. <laughs> Christopher Columbus. Am I really in Paris? You really are. Oh, Laddie, somebody's following you. Are you sure they aren't spies? Spies? <clears throat> oh, I see. You mean Branislav and Leopold here. No, they are my compatriots. We work on our plan together, and any day the call will come through to us. Oh, dear. I try to dissuade them, but they insist on coming along today to greet you. How, How do, do you do, do Mademoiselle? How do you do? Uh, which is which? I am uh, Bronislav. Bronislav? I am Leopold. Leopold? And we should like to show you Paris. So tell us what you wish to see first. 
the Louvre, Les Invalides. Are you three always together? Always. We are inseparable. Like the three musketeers. Uh, Leo, <laughs> there were times in the lives of the three musketeers when they uh, separated for a little while. You understand. Of course. You and Mademoiselle will wish to be alone to see Paris together. It is noon now. Leo and I will meet you at the Café de la Raison at two o'clock. Shut! Au revoir, gentlemen. Au revoir! Until this afternoon. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. A laddie. Must we? Ah, oh, Louisa. We are going to lose ourselves so thoroughly that they'll never find us again. <laughs> you and I, by ourselves, are going everywhere. See everything that is Paris in the spring. Lift your glass, Louisa. So high? So high. What do you see? You. Anything else? Light and shadow, pale light, strong shadow. Oh, it is Paris, you see, through the champagne. Through your eyes. And I see it now through your eyes. Then Paris is ours, isn't it? Look down a moment at the lights. This is the high place, Madroga. The hill of the sacred heart, where lovers come in the hours after midnight. It is two hours after midnight, and I love you, Madroga. Do you say that because we're high above Paris and it's two hours after midnight? I say it for the first time. Louisa, I love you. Laddie, I love you. I say it for the first time in my life. Oh, my darling. Say Madroga to me. Madroga. <laughs> oh, we eluded them, didn't we? Brawny and Leo. We have eluded the world. <laughs> Oh, take care of me, lad. Look down there, Louisa. The boulevard, the Seine, Notre Dame. The city which understands lovers. Even lovers who are exiled? Most especially exiled. Wisniewski! Oh, there you are. We've looked all over Paris for you. We should have known we found you up here. Oh, dear. Did you have to? You could have waited until next week, for example. I am sorry we could not. What is wrong? Nothing has happened. Yes. That is why we search for you. The call has come through. Call? Marty. Louisa, it, it is the word we Polish exiles wait to hear through all this time. It is our chance. It is only the first small organized attempt. It is only a beginning, but so important. But you, you, you needn't go away right now, not this minute. If you were I, what would you do? I... I... If it were your home, your sisters, your father and mother. I don't know, laddie. Oh, yes, I do know. What can I say? Tell me that you love me. And that you understand. Oh, laddie, I love you. And I understand. My drug. I shall be able to bear leaving you only if I know that you will meet me here in this place... When my work is done. I shall. I can't love anyone else. And I shall never forget you. Never. Never. And Laurie said... I can't love anyone else. And I'll never forget you, Joe. Never. Never. Louisa, was that what Laddie said to you over there? Yes, ma'am. Why didn't you ever tell us, Louisa? What became of him? Let me have the book a minute. I want to read you something. Here. Don't laugh at the spinsters, dear girls, for often very tender, tragical romances are hidden away in the hearts that beat so quietly under the sober gown. Oh, Lou, I am sorry. Laddie's dead, but he lives in these pages of mine as Laurie, the boy next door. I'm 
sure our radio listeners join the audience in the theater tonight applauding the performance of Rosemary DeCamp and the others in tonight's cast from the Cavalcade of America. Next week, Cavalcade presents one of Hollywood's romantic young stars, John Lund, in Break the News. It's the dramatic story of the Associated Press, the great American news service, which this year celebrates a century of exciting reporting. Be sure to listen next Monday night to Break the News, starring John Lund on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. In tonight's cast, you heard Elliot Reed as Laddie and Alice Reinhardt as Anna. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Break the News, starring John Lund. Cavalcade of America is presented each week from the stage of the Longacre Theater on Broadway in New York and is brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.